they wanted to use another word. The poor! The poor get them in prison so they can work for free. Yeah. Hey, uh, um, prostitution is uh, what you know. What it comes down to is what a woman wants to do with her own body, and even if she's off the street, they they still can arrest her. Well, the Republicans say they don't right? want government telling them what to do, but they want to tell women what to do, don't they? Oh, in in all ways, yeah. Oh. And they want to stick their noses into our closed bedroom doors, don't they? Yeah. I well, you can't even have a vibrator in Alabama. No, you can't. You can't have a sex shop and sell dildos in Alabama, or maybe not even in Texas. So I, I'm sorry for the asshole that had his uh, alarm going. Oh, he finally shut it off. All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, damn. I mean, so. What does that mean? Uh, if if a woman l lubricates a, a zucchini, it means a zucchini that the or a Republicans like to tell you what to do. So if a woman, what they're saying is, if a woman masturbates with an object <laughs> in Alabama, they can arrest her if they wanted to. There are some people, you know, of Republican stripe, maybe Catholics or whatever. They believe that every time. The male pole enters the female home. A child should result. Otherwise, it's a no-no. So you're not supposed to feel pleasure. You're not supposed to feel pleasure. Please. And and that sounds like they uh, what they said to women back in the uh, the uh, uh, the nineteenth century and before that. They used to say a woman is not supposed to feel pleasure from sex. For thousands and thousands of years, women, and even today, if you if you are up on your porn, you will see that the woman's pleasure, etc., is not taken into account at all. At all! <laughs> you know, somebody posted something very clever on Facebook. Uh, uh, apparently, uh, the, the shampoo company Pantene, I believe it's Pantene, has a a, a phallic shaped bottle? shampoo bottle. And the joke is, uh, women will be taking much longer showers. What was that herbal essence? Remember that commercial they had? Oh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, well, there was. She was trying one? to. She was trying to mimic that movie. Uh, was it Meg Ryan Meg and Ryan, uh, yeah. Sally met uh, Sally Harry? Met Sally. Harry met Sally. Meg Ryan and uh, Billy Crystal in but, the uh, deli. Yeah, Cat's Delicatessen. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's a it's a it's a sort of a missile uh, phallic uh, shaped shampoo bottle. Uh, Gee, I mean, uh, I wonder if did, Alabama will ban them. Did that happen by accident that they came out with that shape of a bottle? I don't think so. I don't know, but like I say, maybe Alabama will ban them. Yeah. And, hey, look at the bright side. When when the shampoo is finished, you got you you don't have to go out and buy a vibrator. A, a, no, well, if you want it to vibrate, you got to buy a vibrator. But if you wanted to buy a basic a dildo or a butt plug, you don't have to. You got your your Pantene bottle. Yeah, cool. Hey, that's all. So cool, man. You could even fill it with hot water for that for that human wash back and forth feeling. Yeah, the, no, the the warmth and the warmth. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not bullshitting you. The bottle is really shaped like that. Anyway, let us sink our teeth back into these readings. But, uh, yeah, oh, um, I haven't done this in a while. Ooh, my back. I, I received that ominous a voicemail again from the 1% elitists that want to conquer the world and enslave the poor and kill off uh, you know, some of the poor. Some? Well, they they do want they do want some to Not work. Eighty percent. Don't they want some to work as slaves? Yeah. Well, oh, I yeah. guess the ones that are that can't work 
as slaves they want to kill off. Oh, yeah. Well, they they'll work them to death, like the Nazis did. There was a there was an old uh, um, song, uh, "Work That Sucker to Death." There you go. Sounds like we are here to kill you in, in Xylon voice. <laughs> At least they're telling the truth. Yeah. Anyway, I would like to salute uh, my buddy, longtime friend, Iron Man Vinnie Blake, for starting to produce uh, videos. Uh, 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 ranting videos of importance that hits home. He is a consumer, uh, along with being uh, in, very much into physical fitness. Uh, uh, Iron Man Vinnie Blake is a consumer advocate for the middle class, and he just put out his first uh, series of uh, fitness and um, I guess you would call them politically oriented. At least one polit. I don't know, consumer advocate video. He was uh, he was at City Fields where the New York Mets play in F Flushing Meadow, uh, Queens. And he was ranting about what everything cost him mm -hmm. to see a Mets baseball game, including the popcorn, the soda, et cetera, et cetera, and how, how much they were gouging him and ripping him off to see a professional sports game, including, I guess, the ticket price mm -hmm. and the snacks and blah blah. So, of course, they don't let you bring your own snacks into the stadium. Well, of course not. How are they going to make that money off you? Eh, so he has a great video that's on the on the internet now, YouTube. Shame on you, City Field and the, I guess, the owner of the New York Mets, mm -hmm. and and all of these stadiums they all rip you off football baseball they, they, I mean at least the ones in the New York area rip you off it's the sign of that protection and the rigging they wouldn't do that for you no they wouldn't do that for your little business now see what happens when the owner says yes to the baseball stars they say yes to their agent they pay them the astronomical obscene salaries and then they turn around and jack up the price of the tickets so the fans the consumers of professional sports are the ones that get hurt bingo uh, that's mr. Reagan again taking the tax burden off the rich and placing it on the backs of the middle class and the poor so be okay. care be careful it's another example so be careful conservatives when you call uh, the poor living on social services, a bunch of blood-sucking parasites. A parasite is usually somebody who takes advantage of another without the, without the host uh, being aware that they're taken advantage of. You know what I mean? Parasites are the railroads in this country, how they got to where they are. The big oil companies, etc., GE, etc. Those are the parasites. Pure and simple. Mm -hmm. Subsidies and grants and tax cuts and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, hey, yeah. why don't you ship our jobs overseas? Yeah. Well, uh, of course they don't uh, call uh, it. Help your bottom line. Yeah. Make your CEOs richer. Go ahead, do it. They don't call it welfare for the rich. They call it subsidies and bailouts. Oh, well, they, you will, but it's goddamn, uh, uh, the, the, as the Bible says, Psalm 10, verse 2. Psalm 10, verse 8. The rich have the poor in their sights. They hate them. Gee, I wonder why they hate them so much. You know, it's, it's the elitists, it's the rich that started the class warfare, not the poor. There, there's class warfare, but it's totally—it was yeah, totally well, started by the wealthy. And they're winning. 
And they're winning because they, they buy their way into power, you might as well say. They, they have many bed lovers uh, in politics, right? Ooh. Ooh. You know. But anyway, let's get back to these readings. Did you know that Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth okay. resigned from the papacy because God told him to? God told him to. I thought it was because his uh, purpose was to invent eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict has been invented already. Oh, 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 this guy's Benedict? No, he's Francis, isn't he? This guy now, this is Benedict, the guy who resigned. Oh, he resigned the German. Because God the, told him to. The German yeah. fellow. Yeah. Okay. God Achtung. told him. Achtung. God told him. God told him, or he just wanted to quit. That's not what he said. I'm quoting the man here. God told me. It sounds like when G.W. Bush claimed that he used to talk to God and God told him things. That's correct. God could, anybody could say that. That's correct. They could say, God told me or the devil made me do it. That's correct. Remember the old saying, the devil made me do it? That's correct. You know, like, uh, 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 what's his name, David Berkowitz? But I can guarantee you, with the knowledge of the Bible, yeah. God did not ever hear Benedict's prayers. Never. Well, the the um, the board so whom he was talking to, whom he had the stove pipe to, was not the God of the Bible. Hey, the 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 the, the born again evangelical uh, fundamentalists insist that you could talk to God about anything. Well, you can talk to it. You can talk to the wall. But if you're expecting an answer, yeah, you better be one of the uh, 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 144,000, the elect, if you want an answer. If you want an answer. Yeah. Otherwise, you can pray to the wall all day long. You can talk to Mr. Anonymous, uh, V for Vendetta. But if you, if you expect an actual answer... The Zenet News Agency reported that Benedict decided to step back as a result of what he described as a mystical experience that should not be confused with a vision. That experience sparked an absolute desire to dedicate his life exclusively to prayer. in a solitary relationship with God. Zenet wrote that its report was based on the account of one of the few people who are granted a meeting with the former Pope, who is living in a retrofitted monastery on the Vatican grounds. Benedict shocked the world when he announced his resignation on February 11, becoming the first pope to leave his job in more than 600 years. Hey, it might be fair to call him a Palin pope. <laughs> <laughs> Nailing Palin. He told AIDS he intended to live out his life hidden from the world. According to the report, the Pope Emeritus also praised the charisma of his successor, Pope Francis. Charisma. Saying that his actions as the leader of the Catholic Church show that his election was God's will. My question is, why was not Benedict's selection God's will? Why didn't he do what Francis is doing? Yeah, she yeah. was so right to do it. Exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, they don't. They don't really deal with uh, the Bible verbatim, anyway. 
They okay. don't deal with the Bible because they are not allowed to. I mean, the Roman Catholic the Church. Bible, I'm talking about the Roman Catholic the Church. The Roman Catholic Church has nothing to do with the Bible. Right. That's what they I just said. Sense. They don't but deal I'm with the, the Bible verbatim anyway. Because they can't understand it. It is not given to them to understand it. So they have their own rules. Their rules are traditions. Like the Mormons. That came from Simon Magus. Is the same thing applies to, let's say, the Mormons? Correct. And how about Muslims? Because you're talking, what, did God wait all these thousands of years till 610 uh, or whatever the hell it was when he gave this information to Mohammed? The uh, Archangel Gabriel, or Jibril, gave, uh, gave, taught everything to Mohammed. Mohammed had epilepsy. How do you got know? all this information you... from, in a cave. How do you know this? Because I've read history. That he was epileptic. You have, is there any proof That's that... That's where these visions Is there any from. proof that Muhammad was epileptic? Well, why don't you look it up? I think I... Hey, Google it, man! What's wrong, what's wrong with the Archangel Jibril uh, approaching Muhammad for real? And, and uh, t teaching him Because things. then... <laughs> because then you would have, have confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. Maybe, maybe originally uh, Archangel Jibril uh, had positive and accurate things to say to Muhammad. Name one. I'm not familiar. I'm not Muslim, so I'm not then familiar. Then why defend it? Well, it was possible. It, no, it ain't possible. Because you just set up, it's either that or the Bible. No, I mean, maybe, maybe, what, he's, no, no, maybe. maybe what he said was synonymous with what's it in It ain't. In the Christian Bible, it ain't. Okay, it ain't. For the third year in a row, Alice and Al, a pair of bald eagles, have nested successfully on Overpeck Creek in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. Really? Against all odds, these two resilient symbols of our nation raised two more young, bringing a total of six eagles, a species that has returned from the brink of extinction wow. back to New Jersey. Now, do you see how great uh, laws of protection are for uh, saving wild species? wildlife, wild species that are endangered. You see how successful they can be? You know, that's wonderful. I, Richfield Park is just a mere stone's throw. Ten minutes away from where we are and to think there's bald eagles there. I mean, I have hawks in nesting in the trees across the street from me right here and uh, and as, as well as other wildlife. You know, and uh, uh, two towns, uh, no, what am I saying? One town over at the in the park, there's coyotes. Saddlebrook, New Jersey, has coyotes in the park. Believe it or not. But this could be the very last year that these proud birds find a nest to return to, and the very last time that school kids, nature lovers, and all residents of Bergen County will be able to witness the miracle on Overpeck Creek. Oh, that's where they are, Overpeck Creek. They have a lovely park there. Since Alice and Al decided to take up residence on a landfill that needs to be cleaned up and is also the site scheduled to be developed with a six hundred and sixty million dollar construction project. Oh, brother. All odds seem to be against these eagles having another successful nesting season come springtime. Well, I hope the Audubon Society in the state of New Jersey comes in and makes sure that the eagles and their, and their young and their eggs are well protected or, or safely transferred somewhere else. Many questions need to be answered by the New Jersey 
<coughs> Department of Environmental Protection, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the developers themselves, Skymark Incorporated. Do they have the know-how and the political will to find a way to clean up the site and still maintain the eagle's nest? Will Skymark care enough about these magnificent birds as say they do to develop their project in a way that will allow them to live with us and bring more eagles into the world? I think they should they should build them a nice secure nest at the top of a a tall office building or a hotel uh, within the area that that's that's taller than any tree the eagles might be in now. We need to keep our eyes on these eagles and make sure everyone concerned does the best they can to maintain and protect them so we could witness how they've struggled and fought back against the odds to nest on Overpeck Creek. Don Torino, president of the Bergen County Audubon Society. Well, Don Don Torino or Grant Torino, like the car. Don Torino. Don Torino should get his ass over to Van Sorn Park in Paramus and see that there is a, a California condor. In the, <coughs> over, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quack, quack. Over in the zoo that can't even. He's lucky he can spread his wings, and he definitely can't fly at all because he's in a cramped cage. Mm. You know, they mm. should be inspecting the birds at that zoo. It's cruel, you know, that a condor can't even can't even like fly at all. The Republicans have a plan. Yeah, they have an agenda, all right. That's news. All the letter writer could come up with was insurance company competition across state lines and tort reform to lower premiums. If he had read the news, he would have known that in the states where Obamacare exchanges have been implemented, there is competition, and rates have been drastically reduced also due to Obamacare's limits on administrative costs, people have been receiving rebate checks from the insurance companies. Before Obamacare, people lost homes, went bankrupt due to medical expenses. Now they are not, because under Obamacare, no one can be denied coverage due to pre-existing conditions, and lifetime caps have been outlawed. They also can keep their children on their policies until age 26. Medicare benefits have been expanded, as has Medicaid, mm -hmm. for those states who gov whose governors consider the good of their poor citizens rather than politics. Clearly, Obamacare is not perfect, and some things have to be fixed. Unanticipated problems problems will occur in such a large new program. Rather than work with the administration to correct them, Republicans are only interested in destruction. Unfortunately, they have been far better in controlling the conversation than has President Obama. The Republican plan is to say no to anything Obama proposes. Yeah. They have no plan of their own. Never had one. And if they come up with one, you can be sure that it will be for the benefit of the insurance companies, not the people. Outstanding, excellent article. Yes, the Republican Party has no alternative to Obamacare. No alternative. They have no answer. They have no solution. They just want to repeal everything that's beneficial and good for the country and its people. Or the, or the people, yeah. So they're, they're... We the people! So they, 
they could care less about the plight of the people. Right? Bingo! Now, that insight you got so quickly, why is it their supporters don't get these insights? Yeah, right. You're right about that. So, so like, if you're a senior citizen and you're not wealthy, and the Republicans get their way, and your Social Security is taken away from you, and your Medicare is taken away from you, what do they expect all these seniors to do? Once upon a time, there were debtors' prisons. Well, why? Why didn't? Well, the accurate, actually, if they had debtors' prisons, that is legalized slavery when you think well, about it. Well, it would be one in a roundabout ways to obtain slavery, yes. But the media back then didn't call it slavery. Slavery is, has returned. They called it debtors' prisons, right? Well, slavery was, if you want to say, legal at that time. Yeah, well, you're... They, they, take, wouldn't, be, they wouldn't even be thinking like that. Well, they take, just think about it, they take a poor person or a homeless person and they put them in in a who's gal. Because he's a ne'er-do-well. They put him in a vagrant, right? Yeah. They put him a, a, a vagabond, whatever you want to call him. A hobo. A hobo. Yeah. Boxcar Willie. They put him in, they, they put him in prison. Uh, you know, I can, I can get a train, I can actually get a train whistle in town that every time we talk about hobos and Boxcar Willie, I can blow it. I got one here somewhere. You brought train one whistle? once. Yeah. Find it. I don't know where it would be. So I can clean it up. I can't find anyway, it. Anyway, they put them in this privatized prison and they make them uh, work off their debt if they have any, which will take forever because they're, they're not paying them that much. Won't and, pay them nothing. And, and they have the nerve to charge the, the, the inmate room and room board. Room and board, baby. And for food, so they'll never leave. It's like the old days. They'll never leave the privatized prison. It's like the old days in the, with the company store and scrip. They paid you with scrip, which you could only use at the company store. Wasn't real money. Oh, jeez. Credit. So they had you as a slave. It was like, it was like store credit? Scrip. What is scrip? It was a form of money. Monopoly. But it wasn't good anywhere else, except at the general, the company store. The company owned the store. Well, how do you and they sold you your provision. Well, how do you pay for... You don't. How do you pay your rent? There was no rent in those days. What are you talking about? You owned your land. Oh, okay. Or you, you know, uh, you yeah. had the well, living didn't, off somebody uh, else's uh, land. Didn't, didn't family-owned farms back then, like, trade with other family-owned farms and yeah barter baby yeah like if you if you had an overabundance of of Adamami. of, of uh, Adamami <laughs> soy and the other guy had an overabundance of corn you would trade your overabundance for some of their overabundance and then you would trade 